How's it going guys? Welcome back to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. Today we're going to battle versus Garrett Legendstone from the Discord server in the overused tier. Let me know who you think is going to win based on the teams you see on screen right now. And with that being said, let's jump straight into the battle. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Garrett. So they're going to lead off with Legendstone. <laughs> Oh, sorry, let's just uh, one up the mushroom. Yeah, that's a cool nickname. One up the Breloom. Um, nice nickname for sure. So, this thing's probably going to rock too much. I want to get the sticky webs up, but I don't know whether I want to do it at the cost of my uh, Araquanid. So, what I might do instead is I might switch out. Um, Rock Tomb kind of hurts our entire team. The Breloom actually hurts our entire team pretty badly. So, what I might do instead is Leech Life or Sticky Webs. I think I'll Sticky Webs for now. And um, they do go for the Rock Tomb, and they do, in fact, miss, which is amazing for us because it means we get one more licking on this uh, Breloom. So, uh, what I'm going to do instead is I get the Sticky Webs up, and I'm going to go straight for the, uh, the Leech Life because they, they might go into Iron Treads, but I don't think they do. They go for a Rock Tomb. Definitely going to 2 it KO us. Um, lowers our speed as well, which is fine. But we're going to get some health back with this leech life real quick. There we go. Some health back. Um, it does a nice bit of damage to the Breloom as well. But it's not enough to recover our health enough for the Rock Tomb not to KO us. So what we can do here is um, we can't really do anything. Our team is very rock weak, I just realized. So we're going to have to let Araquanid go down. I'm going to go for a leech life once again just in case they miss. They actually withdraw the Breloom. They obviously don't want to miss. And they're going to go into Mechatusk, the Paldea champion, the Iron Treads. Which is a good switch in the sense that it can take a leech life, but how well will it take a liquidation the next turn? So, um, we get the leech life off, we're going to get some health back, just a little tiny bit, a little wee bit of health. Takes us back to the green, I think, yeah it does. That's good. And um, this thing can't one shot us, I don't think, and I don't think it will, I think it will try and rapid spin here. So, if it rapid spins, we should definitely liquidation it. So, I'm going to go for a liquidation real quick. So, go for the rapid spin to get rid of them sticky webs, makes a lot of sense. But can Iron Treads take a liquidation from a Water Bubble Araquanid? I have no idea. Let's have a look, see if it does. Nope. Definitely gets taken out by that, which is amazing. So Iron Treads out of the way is fantastic for us. It means they can go into whatever they want, though, and take out the Araquanid. Probably going to be the Pelipper, if I had to guess. In comes Stormbird. That's got to be the Pelipper, right? It's the uh, Killer Wattrel. Okay, so Killer Wattrel comes in. And um, we do have a switch in, in the sense that we have uh, Victory Bolt to take an Electric type attack, but we can't do anything in return. They can just go for a Hurricane. Um, we also have the Roaring Moon, which can definitely take a Volt Switch. Um, but I'm going to instead, I'm going to opt to go for a Liquidation again, just in case they go for a Hurricane and they miss. But they do go for the Volt Switch, the safe play. That's going to take us out. So Bubbles does go down, but it's not in vain because it got, the, it got rid of the Iron Treads, which is great. Unfortunately, the Sticky Webs are going to be gone. But, you know, uh, looking at their team, like as long as the rain's not, we should be all right. So let's see what they go into here. In comes the Breloom once again. So Breloom is a good switch. Definitely a good switch, because it kind of forces me to go into something that I don't need to go into. I'm wondering whether or not I should go into Magmortar or not. Magmortar isn't going to do much for our team, except from taking this thing out. So I think I will go into Magmortar. There we go. Boomstick comes in, and I'm pretty confident Boomstick can take a Rock Tomb from this thing, no problem, unless they Terra. But if they Terra, then the Terra's out of the way. So let's go for a Fire Blast real quick. We might actually outspeed. So we do outspeed. Magmortar KOs the Breloom with a Fire Blast, and we are golden. They probably didn't realize Magmortar outsped, which is... You know, you'd think Breloom would be faster than it is based on the design of it, but it's not a very fast at all. Breloom isn't. So in comes Toilet Bird. That's got to be the Pelipper. It is the Pelipper. There we go. So Pelipper comes through. Um, now, we can actually use Magmortar with the Terra Grass. So what I'm going to do here is, expecting them to go for a Surf, I'm going to go into the Torkoal to get rid of the Rain. And that's going to be really useful. So we withdraw Magmortar as so. And unfortunately, we are Choice Spec, so we can't go for a Thunderbolt on the Pelipper, which would have been nice. Um, so we're going to talk on real quick. Get that sun up instead of the rain. Very nice. They go for a, a withdraw. They withdraw. And what are they going to go into? Floatzel? Stormbird. That ain't good. I ain't got much of a switch in Stormbird. I haven't got much of a switch in at all. So in the sun, though, it's not too bad. Let's get the Stealth Rocks up first and foremost. We want to get Stealth Rocks up. That's definitely going to be important for the Pelibert and the Killer Wattrel and the Dragonite. So they go for a Volt Switch. They are specs by that damage, I would say. So that's good to know that they're going to get some chip every turn. And they probably go into Pelipper now, which is fine. Yeah, in comes the Toilet Bird once again, the Pelipper. We've got ourselves a Weather War for our first battle. The Rain versus the Sun. Pretty awesome, to be fair. So we get the Stealth Rocks up, which is going to limit their switching capabilities. They're not going to want to switch as much as they want to because of the Stealth Rocks. Um, and their Iron Treads is gone, so we can definitely do something there. So what I'm leaning towards is they're going to go for a Surf. But they could go for a Hurricane to finish us off. So I think I'm going to go into Roaring Moon here. Because Roaring Moon can take both. 
Roaring Moon can definitely take a Hurricane. It can definitely take a Surf because the Surf is resisted. So we're going to Eclipse the Roaring Moon like so. And they go for a U-turn, which is going to do a lot of damage to us. So that's that's fair enough. So what can we do here? Because they're going to go into their Floatzel more than likely, or their Dragonite, one of the two. They go into Floaty, which is probably the Floatzel, right? Yeah, the Floats comes in nice and shiny. Got to love it. Um, get some Stealth Rock Chip, which is great and all for them. Now we just go straight for... I think we go for a knockoff. I think knockoff's a good move to go for. I don't want to lock myself into Outrage. I'm pretty confident we can take a Wave Crash from this thing unless they Terror. So they go for a Wave Crash. They don't Terror. Can we take this? We don't even take it. That's crazy damage. Floatzel in the Rain is a monster. That's for sure. So what we'll do now is if they're going to get hit by the Recoil... We should go into our Torkoal. Torkoal is a very good switch. We could also go Magmortar and Terra Grass. Um, but I'm not confident we can take a Wave Crash even with Terra Grass. So I am going to go into the Torkoal real quick. There we go. Smokey comes in. Like so. And uh, we get that Drought up. So that's definitely a Choice Banded Floatzel right there. So I'm going to have to switch out once again. This time, I'm going to go into my Victory Bell. And the reason I'm going to Victory Bell is because they probably switch into Pelipper here. But we outspeed and we can go for a Sludge Bomb, which will do super effective damage. Not super effective damage. It'll do some massive damage to the Pelipper. So that's what we're going to do. They do go for a Wave Crash, but it is in the sun. So that's not going to do much damage at all. As they get some recoil damage as well. So that's great. So now we can go for straight for a Sludge Bomb. They have to go into Pelipper pretty much. Um, so we go straight for a Sludge Bomb here. So they withdraw the Floatzel. They don't want to get taken out. The tables have turned with the sun. And they go into Toilet Bird once again. So Toilet Bird coming in is great. Because we should two-shot this Pelipper with Sludge Bomb. No problem. Maybe even one shot after the after the um, Stealth Rock damage. So that's great. We go for the Sludge Bomb. Will it take it out? It nearly does. Sliver of HP left. That is unfortunate. So now... We go for another Sludge Bomb. We do outspeed still. So we go for the Sludge Bomb. And we have successfully won the Weather Wars. Because all we need to do right now is bring Torkoal back in. And we are absolutely golden. So in comes Stormbird once again. So this thing is probably going to go for a Volt Switch. Expecting us to switch out. They do take some Stealth Rock Chips. Confirming they are probably Choice Specs. So what I'm going to do is. I'm going to go into good old Torkoal. Torkoal can get rid of the rain and also get get the sun up, which is going to be really useful for my Victory Bell, who can potentially sweep their entire team right now. So we'll withdraw Scree, and we'll go into our Torkoal like so. So there we go, Smokey comes on in, like so. We're going to get that Drought up, which is going to get rid of that pesky rain. They go for a Hurricane, they still connect, which is going to take out the Torkoal no problem. But we're in a very good position right now, because now, now... We can just go into Victory Bell once again and outspeed this thing. So let's go into Victory Bell like so. We've got all Scree. Victory Bell's actually putting in the work this game. Put in the work. Take out the Pelipper. I'm going to take out this uh, Killer Watch Roll. Let's go for a Weather Ball because I'm not confident Sludge Bomb will KO. So Weather Ball comes through. It is going to be a base 100 base power fire type move. It does KO the Killer Watch Roll. Sludge Bomb probably would have KO'd to be fair, but I didn't want to risk it. So... Victory Bell is coming through for us right now. What an absolute boss. That means they're going to do a Victory Bell thumbnail. Sweet. So in comes Yoshi, the Paldea Champion. That is going to be the Dragonite. Nice and shiny, nice and green. I like the name Yoshi since it's green. It has got heavy duty boots. We're going to go for a Strength Fap Sat right now because they may want a Dragon Dance. And we want to get our health back. So there we go. Strength Sat comes through. They probably have gone for a Dragon Dance or a, a Fire Punch maybe. Um, to try and immediately get rid of the Victory Bell. Um, but they do go for a Dragon Dance, which is very unfortunate for us. So now that they've got a Dragon Dance up, we still outspeed them in the sun. But their attack is neutral now. So let's go for a Sludge Bomb first and foremost. Let's go for the Sludge Bomb. Sludge Bomb comes through. It's going to break that multi-scale. Not do too much damage, though. And then they're going to go for another Dragon Dance. So this Dragonite is preparing to reverse sweep us, which is very terrifying, to say the least. Um, but we haven't actually... Um, we haven't lost yet. So let's go for a Sludge Bomb once again. Should do a lot of damage to the Dragonite. So they do Terrestrialize. What type are they going to Terrestrialize into? Probably normal if I had to guess. They're usually normal, these Terra Dragonites. It is Terra normal. So it's going to go for an Extreme Speed now at plus one attack. So let's see how much damage that does to Victory Bell. It probably KOs, to be honest with you. As uh, they do go for the Extreme Speed, which is definitely going to KO Victory Bell, right? We do get KO'd, which is unfortunate, but it's fine. Scree goes down. Victory Bell did good this game, though. Victory Bell did real good. It took out the Pelipper. It took out the Killer Wattrel. Really good stuff. So what do we do here? So I'm leaning towards the Iron Boulder. 
or the Magmortar. Now, the Magmortar tech that I'm thinking of is going is because basically, right, if we go Magmortar like I am doing, we've got Flame Body. They're not going to want to go for the Extreme Speed just in case they get burned. Because if they get burned, it's all over. So I think what they do here is, I think what we do here is we trash slide into a Grass type because they're going to go for an Earthquake, I think, to avoid the uh, contact. So we have to hit a Focus Blast right now. So I have to go for the Terra Grass Focus Blast right there. So we're going to Terra Grass to be resistant to the Earthquake, which means we will live. Because I really don't think they'll go for an Extreme Speed against the Flame Body Pokemon. Because if we get the... There's two situations here. We hit the Focus Blast, we beat the um, Dragonite. They go for an Earthquake, it doesn't KO. Or the Extreme Speed, get the Burn, and we're able to KO. They go for the Extreme Speed! They risk the Burn. Let's see if we get the Burn or not. We don't get the Burn? We don't get the Burn, which is really unfortunate. Very unfortunate, in fact. Very, very unfortunate. So what we have to do now is we have to hope that Iron Boulder with booster energy is enough. So we're going to Nice Boulder. Let's see if Iron Boulder can finish this thing off. We get the booster energy and speed. Will base 125, whatever it is, Iron Boulder with a booster energy outspeed a times two speed Dragonite? Let's find out. Let's go for a close combat. They go for an EQ. That's going to KO us. If only we to save the Terra. But that Dragonite just swivers, swept us. So Dragonite came through for them in the end. Well, Victory Bell definitely deserves a spot in the Formula for this battle, that's for sure. GG Garrett, that was a pretty fun one. I really liked how you managed to pull that back with the Dragonite. That was a really good play. So, uh, yeah, GG. Okay, the next battle, the bonus battle of the day is against Chris, aka Pokemaster88. And we always have brilliant battles against Pokemaster, that is for sure. So, let me know who you think is going to win based on the teams you see on screen right now. And with that being said, let's jump straight into the game. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Chris. So, they're going to lead off with Haxorus. As I led off with my Torkoal. So, not the best matchup in the world. That EQ is going to sting, that's for sure. Haxorus does really well against my entire team, though. That's the, that's the good thing about it. So, uh, right off the bat, if you want to see more high-quality daily Pokemon Wi-Fi battles like this one, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next one. So, with that in mind, should we get the Stealth Rocks up or should we go ahead and switch out? I don't really have a switch in other than Araquanid. Um, so, I might just have to grin and bear it, I guess. Um, so I think we can take one EQ. I think I go for a body press to get as much damage on the Saxorus as possible. They go for a Swords Dance. They're probably Lumberry, which is why they haven't switched out because we could Will O Wisp there if we had it. But body press does a solid um, amount of damage as well. So let's go for another body press. I'm going to just try and get the body press off because we have Focus Sash on the Araquanid. They go for an EQ. That's going to take out Torkoal, no doubt. We lived on 20? Torkoal coming through. Let's body press that thing. And now we can go into a Raquinid to finish off with a Leech Life because we do have that Focus Sash intact. So I'm going to try and go for a Stealth Rock just in case they saw us dance again. They go for a Scale Shot though, which is unfortunately going to reveal that they can take out the Araquanid, which is very unfortunate because Araquanid is unfortunately unable to do anything about this. However, they didn't get a uh, Dragon Dance off, but they got one plus one speed. So we can go into our Victory Bell and outspeed this thing because of the sunlight. So let's go into Victory Bell real quick. Victory Bell actually does really well against their team. Um, hopefully we can force a Terra here. They might expect a Sludge Bomb. They might go for a Terra Steel. I'm going to go for a Solar Beam first and foremost. We do outspeed. We go for a Solar Beam, which in the sun is going to be fully charged first turn. And there we go. Solar Beam comes through just in case. Because if we went for a Sludge Bomb and they Terra Steel, then that would have been amazing. And they would have swept me straight away with Haxorus. But Haxorus has gone down now. We don't have to worry about that thing anymore. Thanks to Victory Bell. Once again, Victory Bell put in the work. It put in work in the first game. And now it's putting in work in the second game. Completely destroying the big threat that was Haxorus. I know it had low HP, but still. Kamala comes in. That is a frightening Pokemon right there. Can't be status afflicted. And it probably goes for... So I don't know what it goes for, but they are able to i'm pretty threatened by it because i don't know what it's going to do um so what i might do is strength sap or i might go for another solar beam i don't know i'll go for a solar beam just to see what kind of damage we're dealing we do have the strength sap, so if they deal some damage to us then at least we know we can definitely um strength sap in return so we go for that solar beam like so does a clean 50 percent, which is great and then let's see what they do real quick they're going to go for a body slam trying to paralyze us it's going to do a lot of damage. It doesn't paralyze us, which is nice, as we can go for another Solar Beam once again and get rid of this Kamala. Unfortunately, when the sun, once the sun's gone, Victory Bell will be no longer very viable um, against their team. So they do withdraw the Kamala. Are they going to go into the Flapple? Bastiodon. Let's see how well Bastiodon takes this. I wonder how well it takes a Solar Beam. 
I'm really wondering how Alan takes a solar beam. So we go for the solar beam in the sun, absorbing the light. Let's see if it's a two shot on this um, Bastion real quick. They are in fact two shot. It was a critical hit, but it was still a two hit KO even without the critical hit. So as unfortunate as the crit is, it's not the end of the world. So what they might do now is because we still got another turn of sun, they might go into Flapple to try and like um, get around the weather. So I'm going to go for a weather ball first to finish this Bastiodon off. So they withdraw the Bastiodon. Are they going to go into the Flapple? Have we made the right read here? Have we made the right read? The Flapple comes in, which is amazing. So we have made the right read. This could be Focus Sash though, so we've got to be careful of that. We go for the weather ball though on the Predict. Very, very well, nicely done by Victory Bell once again, as that is not super effective, but it is, you know... I couldn't exactly go for a sludge bomb against the Bastiodon, you know? So, <laughs> I was just hoping that Weather Ball would KO. But we are on a time limit thanks to the um, uh, Life Orb, but it's fine. We can Strength Snap later if we really want to. Bastiodon comes back in. They're basically just sacking Mons off, trying to get rid of the sun at this point, I think. Um, so, what do we do here? Let's go for... Do I go for a Strength Snap? Do I go for a Strength Snap just to get my health back? I think I will go for a Strength Snap just to get my health back. I think that's probably the best thing to do. So strength that comes through. There we go. Nice and recovered. Let's see what this Bastion's going to do to us. We lower its attack. And then we get some health back, which is nice. They go for a Stealth Rock, though. Interesting choice. They probably expected us to KO there. They probably expected us to KO it there. And the Harsh Sunlight does fade, though, this turn. Which is really unfortunate for my Victory Bell. Because it means it literally cannot touch this Bastion. So maybe I should have taken it out while I had the chance. Um, but I got health back, so we can still use it later. So what I can do now is I can switch out. They're probably going to go for... They probably have body press as their only attacking move. Um, so I could charge up a solar beam. I think I might charge up a solar beam. I think I will charge up a solar beam. Screw it. I'm curious to see what this um, Bastiodon can do to us. Um, they go for a foul play. And that does a lot of damage. That's against a crit as well, which is nice. And um, that does mean that the life orb will take us out the next turn. So if I was them, I'd probably go into Clefable here, but I'm sure he'll figure it out. So we go for a Solar Beam. They do stay in to let the Bastiodon go down. Probably the least valuable Pokemon with such low HP. So Victory Bell did super good this game. It did really, it did good in the last game, but it's done really good in this game, that's for sure. So does Victory Bell go down to this Life Orb? It, I think it lives on a sliver of HP, isn't it? So Quackable comes in, the Rank Master. Okay, this thing, this thing could get threatening real quick. So what do we have for this thing? We have the Terra... Oh, we have the Terra Grass on the Magmortar. We've got the Focus Sash on the um, Ar Ar Araquanid, which is something. But we also have... Hmm. Let's go for a Sludge Bomb and just get some damage off. They go for an Aqua Step. They do outspeed us. And that's going to KO Victory Bell. So that something was getting KO'd there. Well, not necessarily, but something was getting hurt there. They get a speed boost, and they also get a moxie boost. So this Quackable could pull this back for them. However, I'm not too worried. So we could go into our Roaring Moon, Terra Steel. Oh no, because they could close combat. I could go into my uh, Magmortar. I think Magmortar is the best thing to do. And I'm going to do what I did in the last game. And I'm going to Terra. I'm going to bring the Magmortar in, and I'm going to Terra. So they might predict the Terra and go for a close combat. The stones do dig in, which is unfortunate. But I'm hoping they go for a Aqua Step. I'm really hoping they go for the Aqua Step to get the extra speed so that they can outspeed Iron Boulder. Um, but I'm really hoping we get a Flame Body Burn. That'd be clutch. I'm not hoping for hacks, but, you know, it'd be nice still. <laughs> so we Terra. They haven't Terra'd themselves, so we know if we hit this Terra Blast Grass, it's going to do all the damage. Let's see what they go for. If they go for a close combat, then we know we can take it out with Iron Boulder next turn. And um, with close combat from that. So let's just see how this plays out real quick. And they do go for an Ice Spinner, expecting the Terra Grass. Really good play by my opponent there. As a Boomstick does go down, no Flame Body or anything like that. That was a really good play. Quackable might just actually pull this back for them, but they are still at plus one speed. So we can outspeed them with the Iron Boulder. Um, that's for sure. However, before I do that, I really want to hit this in the face with a Liquidation from Araquanid. Araquanid resists all of its free attacking moves, so we can definitely live one of those. Um, but I don't want them to get an Aqua Step up, that's the problem. And they'll get an Aqua Step up if they KO the Iron Boulder. Um, okay, I'm going to go into it. I think I think Roaring Moon could pull this back, so I'm going to go into the uh, nice Boulder real quick. Get that booster energy and speed, which is going to allow us to outspeed it. 
And what we'll do is they might it might force them to Terra because if they expect a psychic stab move from us, then it might force them to Terra. So I think I am going to go straight for the CC. I don't see why not. So they are going to Terra. What type are they going to Terra into though? I'm I'm assuming it'll be something that can be resistant to psychic. But what steel? Water. It's Terra water. We could have mighty cleaved. We could have mighty cleaved. No, I think close combat does a little bit more. I think close combat does a little bit more. So we go for the close combat. CC comes through. A nice 50% to them, which is amazing and all that stuff. Um, as they go for an Aqua Step, probably. Yeah, Aqua Step comes through and that's going to KO us and boost their speed. So Quackable is going to get absolutely destroyed here. There we go. No, no, not Quackable. Iron Boulder is going to get absolutely destroyed here. As a nice Boulder does go down. But it's not the end of the world. Moxie is going to make them plus three. But like I said, Araquanid, I'm pretty confident, can take a close combat from this thing. And they have to go for close combat. It's the strongest move, I think. So I'm going to go into the Araquanid. And it's not Focus Sash anymore because of the Stealth Rock. I know that. I'm just thinking maybe we can live, because of our resistances, we can live and attack and go for a Leech Life here. I really want to hope we can. So I'm going to go for that Leech Life. And they go for the Aqua Step, which is once again probably going to KO us. But I'm going to try it anyway. Let's try it. We do live on 5 HP. And we go for a leech life. It's not going to be enough to KO though. No, it's not. We were just off the KO. So Raquin nearly pulled that back for us. Very nearly pulled it back for us. Um, but unfortunately, it's not able to do its thing. So Quackable, it looks like Quackable is going to sweep here. Which is very unfortunate. Maybe, I don't know, because they have Ice Spinner. So it's not like, they wouldn't go for a close combat against the Roaring Moon because of the Ice Spinner. So I'll go for another leech life just in case. They do go for an Aqua Step though. And that Quackable is definitely going to pull this game back. So even though Victory Dale did well in both games, we did lose both games. But you know what? It's not about winning or losing. It's about taking part and all that stuff. So it was a fun battle nonetheless. But let's just see what uh, Roaring Moon can do here. Um, you never know. Roaring Moon like, might surprise us. <laughs> I doubt it. It's not outspeeding. It's not living any hit from this thing. No problems there. Um, we've already terrored. So I think Roaring Moon can't do much here. But... I'm just really glad Victory Bell put in the work in most of those games. Really glad. So I'm going to go for the knockoff just in case. So they go for the Ice Spinner. That's definitely going to KO. Even though it's not stabbed, it's definitely KO in the Roaring Moon. And that's going to be the game. So GG Pokebass, that was a fun one. Um, really well come back. Well, once again, both my opponents making epic comebacks against my team. Like that Dragonite with the Dragon Answers and then the Quackable with the Aqua Steps. Epic comeback. We didn't have much to stop it, to be honest with you. So... GG nonetheless, that was a pretty fun one. Thank you for the game, Pokemaster. But anyway, here is the team. Try it out if you want to use the code at the top right corner of the screen. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you did enjoy, of course, leave a like, subscribe, all the wonderful stuff. And with that being said, I'll see you all in a bit.